saved from the grubby mitts of the scrapper people. It was an amazing chest refrigerator, 7-Up machine that we're going to save. Plug it in right now, it doesn't cool, but that's easily fixed. This right here, 7-Up machine, used to vend bottles like this. They would just be it's what you call a slider machine. And these would be lined up in there. You'd put your coins in and you'd slide it over and you'd pull out the cold soda, whatever one you wanted. I think it only vended one type 7-Up, of course, the end cola. But all the guts are gone, but it's still an amazing, amazing chest refrigerator. And we're going to fix it. And if you're watching this because your refrigerator doesn't work, the same principles here are for a stand-up refrigerator with doors. Just This one's just sideways, I guess. It's an unrefrigerator. Keep watching. So the first thing you're going to run into when you want to work on one of these systems is there's actually no way to actually hook up your gauges. There's no service ports anywhere. You can see that I do have a service port on here. And I did that with what's called a line tap. And these are cheap. I'll put a link to them below. Um, you can have, get them shipped to you for like five bucks or something to that effect. So really low investment. But this one's on there. It's called a Mac adjustable line tap valve. And what it does is it just slides over the round line, pierces a little hole, and gives you a place to actually have a fitting. Um, now, what this one, where you want to hook it is right off of um, the compressor motor. There's going to be a dead end line that just comes straight out and just dead ends. It just ends. And so you can see right here that they've crimped and crimped it. And then they just plugged it up with, you know, they brazed, brazed it close so it never leaks. And it's a completely sealed system. So now I can test my pressure, see how much pressure is in there. I can pressurize the system. I can add gas. I can take gas out, everything else. And so in this situation... I actually hooked it up after I ran this for a while. I actually hooked it up and found out there was zero pressure. So it wasn't cooling at all when I got this. I mean, this has been sitting for, you know, 20, 30 years. Who knows? And, of course, it didn't cool. But the motor, the motor runs. You plug it in. It hums away indefinitely for as long as you want. But I hooked up the gauges, and the pressure was zero. So no pressure. Now we just got to find the leak. So what I'm using to pressurize the system is definitely not compressed air because there's going to be moisture in it and I, you don't want to introduce moisture into your system. So what I'm going to use, the ideal thing to use is nitrogen. I don't have nitrogen. I don't have access to nitrogen. I'm not going to spend a couple hundred dollars on a nitrogen tank for a, a, a worthless cooler. You know, that's, it's worth. if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It's worthless. But I'm not going to spend the money on a worthless cooler. More money than it's worth to, to work on it. Um, so what I'm going to use is there's, you can use argon as well. Places don't use it, you know, I read online because it's more expensive than nitrogen, so you don't use argon. But I do have welding gas that is argon CO2. It's only 25% CO2, and this is in a steel tank, so I doubt the 25% CO2 has moisture in it, you know, and if it does, it's extremely small, but I doubt there's any moisture in it. Argon doesn't have any moisture in it, but I doubt there's any actual, you know, moisture in this steel tank. So... We should have a dry gas that can pressurize the system. And I'm going to use my, I'm using my welding regulator because um, I don't want the straight pressure out of it. This is 1900 PSI. That's about 140 bar. So that's a ton of pressure. So I need to use my welding regulator to really scale that down to under 100 PSI or so to uh, pressurize the system or maybe even 100 PSI if I could. But what I was able to get is about 85 PSI. And so I just took my welding line that would normally go into my welder and hose clamped on a piece of heater hose to uh, slid inside a piece of fuel line and then crimp that to an older uh, manifold gauge thing. Didn't cut it. I was able to just crimp it to the very end. Now this is just a temporary, temporary setup. Just enough to get the gas in and I was able to pressurize the system up to about 85 PSI and found the leak. So now we're going to tackle, we're going to tackle the leak. So it actually took a couple tries to actually get that sealed up. And the problem is, is I didn't have anything. You know, generally when you're sealing something, you put a, a union or a joint like this right here. Um, and you insert the copper in and the copper or the solder sweats itself in. 
and seals up. So I couldn't get it to, it kept opening up the pinhole. So what I did is I took some stranded copper wire, just like this, I took three or four strands about this long, and I actually just wrapped them around, just wrapped them around the pipe, and that just gave the, uh, the solder something to bite onto and uh, seal. So I just wrapped that around where the hole was, a couple strands of it, tap, solder, flowed all the way around it, and it is sealed up good. And the reason I didn't use brazing rod is because even though it looked like it had a big flame there, I was only getting this pipe up to maybe like 500 degrees or so, maybe 600. Um, where if brazing rod is way better, but brazing I would have to get this up to 13, 1400 degrees, 1500 degrees. And I don't want that traveling up inside that's sealed that I can't see. So um, we're sealed up. So now I got an airtight system that'll hold pressure as long as I want. So I'm ready to refill it with refrigerant, right? First, we've got to vacuum it down. And what we're doing is we're creating a vacuum in there to boil off any moisture and to pull out any crappy air. Back in the day before they had vacuums, what they would do is they would just purge it. So they'd run nitrogen or argon or some other inert gas through it just to clean out the system, but it left nooks and crannies. Found out, they, well, they discovered that vacuum it down actually left it cleaner. So there's a couple different options. Um, if you're looking for vacuum pumps, the first one you'll run into in a very friendly price range is one of these. This is an air vacuum pump and they do work. Um, what it does is you just plug your air compressor in. You need a decent sized air compressor because it uses a fair amount of air and it uses a Venturi effect and just vacuums it down. They're not that efficient. Um, they work okay. Um, this one I've done on my test is 92.4% uh, efficient. So it's only 92% efficient, which isn't great, but it will work in a pinch. Um, better than that are actually electric pumps, and you'll see more HVAC guys, or if you read Forbes and stuff like that, that's what they're going to use because you don't want to carry an air compressor out to a job site along with your air pump like this, big old air compressor. It's easier just to carry an electric unit. And they're very efficient, but you'll start looking at those, and those are in the hundreds of dollar range. Some of them will get up to probably even the thousand dollar range for amazing ones. Um, and then they'll rate them down and how many microns they can pull. But even better than that and even cheaper, you know, if you're doing this on the cheap, is one of these. This is a, um, an AC compressor. The same thing that's right in there that we're working on, here's one from a system that wasn't salvageable. So if you're doing this and the system isn't salvageable, you just take out the old one and use, use the, the old one for a... Uh, your own vacuum pump or you just look on Craigslist and in a matter of seconds you can find a million old refrigerators that have one of these units in them. This one's a little bit taller because it came out of a like an AC, like a window AC type unit. And this will pull an amazing vacuum. It pulls, I've tested it down to, um, what is it, 98.3% is what I get out of it. And that's 15 microns and if you start looking at pumps, a 15 micron pump is amazing and you're in the hundreds of hundreds of dollar range for free for free. But all we do is, and I'll put up a video how to mod one of these up, how to make one, but this will pull down to whatever pressure we need it to, plenty to do what we need it to. The idea is we want to pull a vacuum so low that it actually boils off the water because the lower the vacuum, the, uh, the lower the pressure that the water boils. This one I can pull at 98.3% efficiency. Print it off a chart. I can look up, that's about 15 microns. I can look right up right here real fast and find out 15 microns is oh wrong chart 15 microns my water water will boil at 64 degrees so 64 degrees is pretty low for water to boil problem is this is very chilly out here it's only actually 60 degrees so even pulling with this which is extremely efficient my water is not going to boil so what do I do quick and easy we cheat one of these it's a hot air gun. All I gotta do is heat up my lines, because right now they're 60 degrees. All I gotta do is heat them up a couple degrees. I can run this over really quick, and I can get that up to 100 degrees in, in a minute. And so, I'll just run this over everything, just warm it up. You put a little space heater in there, you just warm up that thing. So if you're using one of these, which is way less efficient, uh, water will boil at 104 degrees or so. It's 104 degrees, it doesn't take much you know, just to warm this up and get that up to 104 degrees. So even with a, an inadequate pump, you can get it to work as long as your system is all warm because then the water vapor will boil, turn into a steam, 
turn it into a gas and get sucked right out and you'll have a dry system. So I'll put a video on how to build one of these. I'll put a link at the end of this video. But for now, I'm going to vacuum, vacuum it out and then we're on to putting on refrigerant. So now it's time to put in the refrigerant. We've got a completely vacuum down system. It's dry and ready to accept. Now, what kind of refrigerant do you put in? Well, this one came with R12, so that's what kind of should go back in, but there's also swap out ones you can put in. Um, one of them being R12A, which essentially is just propane and butane. You can put in just propane and butane, and it works amazingly well. There's R152A, which is made from acetylene, that can be swapped in as well, that's um, good with the um, the oil that's already in there um, and R152A is just um, air duster the same stuff you spray out and goes into the ozone that's air duster um, you can't swap in like the R134A the same stuff in your car and you can't swap that into an R12 system unless you're going to clean out all the oil and take out the whole compressor so you don't do that in those things um, but the 12 which was in there is probably the most the best idea to put back in there. I'm not going to show you guys that. But then if you're asking, whoa, 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 you can't get 12 anymore. No, you can't. And it's super expensive. No, it's not actually. The nice thing is, is back when they swapped it out in 94, um, everybody wanted it. Everybody hoarded it. Um, it was a million bucks. It's way more expensive than any other refrigerant. But everybody with those cars are gone. So those cars are long gone. The AC system's in those are all converted, they're gone, so now you can buy a can of um, the R12 off eBay for 10 bucks, 15 bucks. Get two cans for 25, something to that effect. So about the same price, you can just go down to Walmart and buy one of these, you can go buy a can of R12. I'm not telling you to do that, I'm not telling you to do that, blah, 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 blah. Now listen to me, so I'm not gonna show you that. So we use this can for demonstration. There's a couple different styles of cans and a couple different styles of uh, fittings. You got the cans that have the little uh, screw on top. You got cans that are just plain on top. Um, and you use the corresponding screw on. This screws onto this one. The uh, older style that's just flat on the top uses one that crimps on and then this little thing screws in and it pierces a hole right in the top. The same that this does. But what you'll do is you screw this on, you'll hook up your whole system, you'll pierce, you pierce it, you open it up, so now there's gas trying to flow, but you'll come up here and you'll crack this middle line to bleed the system, and that will bleed out any, um, it'll bleed out any air that's trapped in this line, the moisture that's in this line, it'll just blow it out, you'll screw it back down tight, you'll just do that for a split second, and the only air you're left with in, in there, and only contaminants, is just a little teeny, teeny little spot. Can't be perfect. But then we'll make sure that's completely open. And then we'll just crack our valve and let the juice flow in. Um, read your sides. Re refrigerators, all that, will have a capacity. This one has a 7-ounce capacity. I have an ounce, the exact amount of ounces that this system was designed for. So as long as I just put that in... By taking this and, you know, if you're using something like this and just put it on a kitchen scale, a nice digital kitchen scale, set it down so the hose, weight of the hose and everything is equal and just flow it in with your knob right here until you get to where you need to be. Um, leave a little bit extra so if you're 7 ounces put in, I don't know, 7.5 ounces or so and accounting for whatever would actually uh, flow would be stuck in this line. Um, and when you disconnect it, because as soon as you disconnect all this stuff, you'll lose just a little bit. But I'm going to recharge it. So it's been a couple days. Is it cold? Just barely kicked on. Sitting at a comfy uh, 34 degrees. Can we have our cold beverage? You know we can. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe. And if you want to know how to make the vacuum pump, don't forget to click the link right over here. Go to Facebook. See you guys soon. Thanks. Bye.